Welcome to Maritime Moment, your Marine News Entertainment Video Podcast Program. I'm your co-host, Lisa Overing, here with Art Hill and Julianne Raines. Maritime Moment takes you inside the most interesting marine companies. You'll meet the players who make it all happen behind the scenes and learn how their actions ripple to the passengers on shore. In the news, during boat show season, crew are busy with a chamois, drying and polishing yachts lest a water spot or breath of vapor appear on a gleaming white hull. Equally fastidious attention is paid to the vessel interior with aggressive white downs in today's biologically safe environment. The upcoming Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show, or FLIBS, provides thermal screening, temperature checks, continual white downs of every surface imaginable at an outdoor boat show, with hydrostatic sprayers, and more to prevent the transmission of germs. Coronavirus notwithstanding, the subject of viruses, bacteria, and mold have immersed boaters for ages. Naturally, boats are on the water and in the most humid environment when enclosed. Leaks must be sealed constantly. Seats and materials are zealously wiped down with bleach solutions to avoid the inevitable mold and subsequent odor that cannot be eliminated simply by running an air conditioner on board. Our guest today is an expert in reducing moisture and preventing mold and odor. Hector Escardo is the co-owner of Right Air Marine, a manufacturer with a ducted dehumidification solution that reduces and controls humidity by drawing in moisture through the ducts and redistributing dry air flowing out. Maritime Moment welcomes Hector Escardo to the show. Hector, let's make some sound waves. Thank you, Lisa. Glad to be here. We're glad to have you. This is a popular topic now with the boat show coming up. And every day, on every boat, preventing odor, preventing mold. Um, why is it that people think that running their air conditioner on board will control humidity, which it doesn't. We'd like to learn some more about your RAM dehumidifier unit. Well, air conditioners are designed to control the temperature on board. By doing so, it does lessen humidity a little bit, but it's not by design, it's a byproduct. Matter of fact, the fact, the, the fact that you're reducing the temperature of the air so dramatically like an AC does is counterproductive to reducing humidity. So right air is in essence very simple machine, much like an air conditioning, but it's entirely designed with no concerns to air temperature, but only about reducing humidity. So with right air, well, without right air, boats typically will have this uh, well-maintained clean boat will have humidity levels anywhere between 60 and 70%. Uh, chilled water systems are actually even worse for trying to reduce humidity because mm -hmm. the soils aren't that cold. I mean, the chilled water temperature is not as cold as conventional uh, air conditioning units. Mm -hmm. So they don't promote as much uh, condensation going on at the air hand. With right air, we aim to take you below 50% rel relative humidity. Uh, the perfect level would be about 45%. It's a very comfortable, it's a level below 50. Uh, there'll be no condensation going on in your air handlers, in your ductwork, in your grills or, so or hard surfaces that the very cold air produced by your AC first comes into contact. So you're Counters won't be sweating. You won't have to chamois your windows inside. Um, your grills won't be wet. Your ductwork won't grow. There'll be no water, no condensation. Amazing. So, right air system uses dry air flow to reduce humidity and control moisture and odor, correct? That's yeah. the opposite of cold AC, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Uh, okay. <laughs> it it's definitely does do 
take your AC or your boat interior to a level that the AC can't get you at, which is below 50%. Okay. With no condensation, you took away the environment for mold growth. So mold won't colonize. It's always in the air, but in very small quantities. You provide the right environment, the mold will colonize, start growing, and start giving you little black dots, the smells. And depending on your level of sensitivity, it could be very quick or it could, uh, well, some people even call it boat funk and they kind of expect to see that on a boat. But once they experience right air, they, they change their mind about what a boat should be. So is uh, Hector, I actually get that question a lot. You know, even the other day, my, my in-law was looking at a, a cuddy cabin and she was like, would you trade your boat up to get to get a, a boat with a cabin? I'm like, no, it's because they always stink down inside. You know, like those little cabins get moldy and smelly and like they're kind of weird. Is that kind of what your product does? Does it help with that that smell that we oh, we all know? <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll eliminate it. And normally, what we do on a boat is we go in, we visit you, we take us some measurements. We use equipment such of our, as our Gray Wolf. Okay. Okay, our Gray Wolf, this particular instrument is measuring formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a VOC that a lot of people don't know are present on boats. Actually, it's present in everything. Everything from your plywood, your glues, your adhesives, your mm -hmm. carpet, your dyes, the finish that they put on the walls. So many things will emit, um, formaldehyde. In the States, we're pretty well regulated. So American-made boats don't have a big formaldehyde problem. Matter of fact, I've never measured one that was beyond the limits of what the EPA considers safe, which is 70 parts per billion. Like right now, the one that I have on the, for, on, on the Gray Wolf right now is a boat that we measured a few weeks back, and it's got 10 parts per billion which is a very, very good number to have on board. Normally boats, American-made boats, don't exceed 50, and that's well within range. Or made boats coming from countries that aren't so regulated, they use products in it to build a boat that do emit a lot more formaldehyde. We also use instruments. This is also Grey Wolf. But this instrument, this is a sensor and this is a computer for it. We go in and we measure things like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, humidity, temperature, dew point. And from this information, we generate a lot more information. Not long ago, we went into a boat that they suspected they had a high formaldehyde, uh, a lot of formaldehyde on board. And they wanted us to go test and see if that was correct. Well, with this instrument, we they had they had no formaldehyde problem. The problem is the two cabins in questions, they were completely stagnant. There was no airflow, no ventilation. Uh, carbon dioxide, which is what we breathe out, was very very high. So wow. what they needed was, yes, their their humidity was high. It was about 60%. So bringing it down to 45 would do great things for the boat. But also by installing right air, we are mixing the air in the boat continuously. We make sure that no one place gets stagnant like this one did. So by doing that, we would improve the humidity problem and we would create the circulation that these two staterooms so desperately needed. We also use this other instrument. Well, mainly we hand them out to customers. Uh, we sell them and we use them as a very quick reference. It's uh, about a $55 instrument that's measuring humidity, uh, temperature, and it's giving you the dew point. So the you have a thermostat and this is a humidistat, right? This is a humidistat, yes. Yeah. And the humidistat is measuring the temperature and relative humidity and keep in mind relative humidity is re the, the humidity levels can rise and lower even though the water content in the air remains the same by just raising temperature 
64 percent, which is what that instrument was reading, means that at the current temperature of this room at 77 degrees, it's holding 64 percent of the water that it can hold. If I drop the temperature in this room, let's say to 65, the relative humidity is going to go straight up, meaning that this amount of water at that temperature, the air is holding let's say 85% of the water that it could hold. So that's when you look at the, the dew point measurement. All these instruments read their dew point. Dew point is the temperature at which that level of humidity will condensate. So if you look at a dew point chart in a boat that we find at 70 degrees at 65% relative humidity, the dew point, let's call the dew point 60 degrees, well, the air in the AC ducts is below 60 degrees. Hmm. So it'll condensate and create all your problem. Now, change either the humidity on board or change the temperature on board or change them both, you can prevent reaching dew point. And that's what we do by getting you below 50% relative humidity you don't reach the dew point temperature and condensation won't occur. There's also other uh, important VOCs we spoke about formaldehyde, but there's other things on board like waste smells, fuel smells, um, waste tank smells. The bottom line is that boats don't need to smell. They don't need to have smell. There's no need for them to smell, no. But a your lot boat of smells like fish, but you never left the dock. <laughs> <laughs> Some people leave the dock and still can't catch fish. <laughs> We're going to talk about that later, Hector. Okay. Uh, talk to me first about some of the yachts that are using Right Air Marine. Well, we're installed in about an over a hundred boats. We just we just got over a hundredth and, and one boat. So we've been doing this for seven years, and now we're doing a lot. Of, we're doing two, three installations a month, and because of my background, uh, a lot of them are sport fishing boats. But we have a lot of motor yachts as well. Our typical install will be a boat anywhere from 50 to 120 feet. We've done uh, we've done West Ports, uh, 112 West Port. We've done uh, just about every model Viking that Viking has built in the last 20 years. Uh, 66, 64, 61. Well, I, I can go on forever, but we've done all uh, every model Viking that has come out in the last 10 years. Cool. All right. Motor yacht um, and Choilies, Azimuts, and Westports, and uh, quite a few. Horizon. We have a brand new Horizon coming from Taiwan with our equipment on it. When when you when you, you mentioned earlier about like airflow and stagnant rooms, do you, have you seen like a change in the like whole design of yachts, especially like the sport fishing boats? Does that affect like the airflow throughout the boat itself? No, that that's a great topic because yes, I mean, you look at boats back in the 60s and 70s, 80s, and even into the 90s, every side window opens, you look at mm -hmm. the deck or the, and it's got six, seven hatches, every port light opens. I mean, the, the boats are built because ACs weren't so important to have. Matter of fact, in the 60s, AC wasn't invented for a boat till, uh, till late 60s. In the 70s, it was still unheard of. In the 80s, it was a luxury. Nowadays, right. you, if you buy a boat without AC, I bet you better own it for life because you're not going to sell it. But uh, nowadays, you look at boat designs, you look at uh, the bow of a sport fish, you have one hatch. Look at the side windows, none of them open. Uh -huh. The only end point is the back door. So it's impossible to ventilate it. I would imagine anyone that um, 
had a boat didn't wouldn't want it to smell foul. So what what does this system cost and, and how does it vary by the size of the boat? Well, it doesn't vary much by the size. Of, we have we have the ability of building like four different models of, of right airs, of dehumidifiers. We've never used anything but the smallest one. Hmm. And the reason for it is the hardest part of the installation is the ductwork. We're running four, five, sometimes up to six inch ductwork throughout your boat. And rarely do we have the opportunity to do it on a boat at the factory where think places could be made, axes and spaces for everything. So the bigger the unit, the more ductwork you plan on doing. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, let's get into some rapid fire questions. So these next few questions will be like the quick, quick answers. You know, first thing that pops to your head, you know, some answers may take a little longer. Some may be a little shorter, but basically it's just, you know, get through a, a couple of questions before we hand it back over to close out the show. So you ready? Yep. All right, Hector, what was your first boat? Sailboat. Not very exciting for the sport fishermen, but sailboat, catamarans, fast, exciting. All right. What's your favorite fish to catch? Uh, my favorite fish would be sailfish. Not only are they very exciting to catch, but I caught my first one by the time I was 13. And I remember it vividly. You were hooked. Yeah. <laughs> so sport fish or center console? For you personally? Uh, center console. I'd like to say that I could have a sport fish, but work with boats all my life, and uh, bigger is not necessarily better. Love it. Perfect answer. Uh, live bait or artificial? Well, I'd have to say that live bait, being the tuna guy and all, but <laughs> most of my fishing has been uh, artificial and... Uh, Artificial and, and spear gun. I am nice. a young do a lot of diving. Nice. Oh, good. Interesting answer. All right. So what was your what has been your guilty pleasure? Not only just in this, you know, COVID nineteen world that we're living in, but but overall, what is what is your indulgence? Hmm. Cooking. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. Any yeah. any fa any favorite meals or types of meals or something that you kind of oh I made it. I'm uh I was born in Peru and I lived in Peru for up to my teen years and I cook mostly Peruvian food like wow. ceviche probably very well known among fishermen. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, I have another question for you. With all these tournaments, what's been the biggest fish that you've never caught? That I've never caught? That you've never caught. I mean, I have to imagine you're a pretty good angler. So I guess I get to make up a story here because it's <laughs> I never caught him. <laughs> <laughs> we always heard about the one that got away. <laughs> well, over here where I live in the Tampa Bay area, we do a lot of bottom fishing. We don't get to go do a lot of uh, marlin and sailfish fishing. So I would say that the biggest thing that we've missed that we know it was there is a Goliath grouper. Mm. That we brought one up, but there's several more down there that are monsters that are not coming up. Yeah. I mean, and they can be four or 500 pounds. I mean, these things are truly sea monsters. Like these are the ones that are the size of Volkswagens that people are like, Oh, you know, you, you hear of fish that could eat people. Like, no, they really could. Kind of scary. I, I've gone scuba diving and gone into a cave looking for other things and found myself face-to-face -face with a Goliath grouper that's bigger than me. Wow. Yep. And, the, and they're territorial. They're, they don't run away. They don't have to. It's <laughs> literally not. <laughs> You're on their turf for sure. That's awesome. Well, good. So I would say my last question, you know, if, if there was one, one message that you can give for the industry, anything that we haven't covered or just something that you feel like you need to get off your, your chest, what would that, that parting shot be? Well, 
Right Air is a huge benefit for yourself, for everybody on the boat, and for the boat. We have a few captains that have realized this, and they won't be on a boat without it. Thanks again, man. You, you're obviously the tuna tube man, and you have a lot more stories about that stuff. So uh, we'll talk again soon. Man. Thanks for tuning in to Maritime Moment. You can catch up on our first five episodes on MaritimeMoment.com. Stay tuned for the best of Maritime Moment. The best is to come. But the Fab Five, who are our first guests, Mike Moore, Justin Beard, Nick Boxa, Amy Ira, and Karen Lynn Poulos will have their favorite minutes for Maritime Moment. Until then, we thank you for tuning in from the sea and on shore. Thanks for making sound waves with us. You know, it's all about the ripple. Peace out. Peace.